Jersey that I have that I have a pension and I collect uh, social social um, social security. So between the two checks and my wife's social security check, we make too much money. Uh, that's what they're trying to tell me. I'm making too much money, but I'm not. I, I still got to pay the taxes. I'm still trying to keep the upkeep of my home, so my home looks nice like everybody else. It costs money to keep a home together. Electric, all that stuff costs money. Insurance in New Jersey is outrageous. I'm saying, when will you hear the people's cries that we need concerns of the people that we place in position? We voted you in this position. We voted you in this position that we thought you were going to do something for the poor person and the middle class person. And and, and and only thing we can do is the same way we voted you in, we can vote you out. David Venardi, 115 Marshall Avenue. Uh, I also am the chairman of the Board of Fire Commissioners for Gloucester Township Fire District 4. And I'd like to address a statement made by Mr. Hutchinson in response to one of the questions that was asked, comparing our fire districts to Cherry Hill if we could consolidate. Uh, I think that's a gross oversimplification and a misstatement, sir. Um, I think to compare Gloucester Township, where we have six fire districts relying almost uh, majorly reliant upon volunteers, to compare us to a fully paid department and say that our budget would triple or quadruple um, is not a correct statement. Um, the reason I say that is because I can't imagine how efficiently our township would operate if we had six town councils, six police departments, or six departments of public work. I can't imagine how inefficiently our fire districts operate with six separate taxing entities, six individual tax rates throughout the township, 30 fire commissioners who make almost $150,000 a year in salaries. I think that it's a gross misstatement to say that it can't save money or at least be run more efficiently. And I can give you examples in Deford, Washington Township, Winslow Township, and Voorhees that have consolidated and kept their volunteers and maintained their budget. We currently operate in this township on about $7 million in fire tax. Uh, we could run 24-hour shifts if we were to consolidate and pool our resources. So uh, as someone who has pushed for consolidation and continues to push for consolidation of the fire district, I think you do a disservice to the township by um, misstating or misrepresenting the fact that it would triple or quadruple our budget. May I ask how much Cherry Hill is? Uh, I believe Cherry Hill is between 12 and $14 million. So between 12 and 14, so 13 million. So it's twice the cost of ours. Yes, sir. Why is it twice the cost? Uh, they have no volunteers. They're relying fully on a full-time paid fire department. Didn't they have volunteers before they consolidated? They did, and when they consolidated, there was a, an issue with the fact that their volunteers were also collecting a salary. They weren't truly volunteers. And aren't, there, aren't there paid firemen pensionable and getting benefits? They're full-time paid firefighters, are, yes, sir. They're getting pension and benefits? Yes, sir. Okay. But we have 22 as opposed to their entire department. That's all. You're pushing for consolidation. What's, I am pushing for consolidation. I think it would operate more efficiently. Okay. So, I thank you for your time. Thanks, Dave. Change that hat. You know, 
Along with our regular taxes, we are overtaxed in Camden County, as far as I'm concerned, which I know as the Board of the Township is not a major concern of yours, but back in the 90s when they implemented, <coughs> implemented rather, the um, DCMUA, we were told that was for 10 years, only 10 years, and it won't go any further than that. And then it will be abolished. That was what we were told. It wasn't abolished. It was just added on, and more is being added on. And they keep raising taxes on the seniors who, by the way, put their children through school, paid the school tax. <coughs> like I said, I've been here 44 years. I paid school tax for 44 years. There ought to be a limit on what senior citizens have to pay toward the school tax. <laughs> and people don't pay the school tax, then why do we pay? That's all I'm asking. Darlene, thank you for coming out. Um, I'll, I'll address the last part. Uh, in our apartment complex, yes, the largest taxpayer right now in Gloucester Township is Millbridge Apartments. Because when they raise the uh, individuals who rent apartments, when they raise their tax, excuse me, when they raise their rent, that's that's the Millbridge complex or Autumn Ridge or Scenic Falls, they're paying their taxes. So there are individuals that do pay taxes there, the property manager, the property owner. Um, again. Well, then why not increase their taxes instead of seniors? I mean, well, that's what we get. An increase is across the board, there's an increase. Um, with <coughs> stopping property taxes for senior citizens when you get to a certain amount, that's an issue that goes with the state. It's, this is something that property taxes are used to fund education. And this is not something that any municipality can address and say, Darlene, that we can stop this. This is mandated through the state of New Jersey. This is how our children are educated. This is how we pay our teachers. This is how we pay for their pensions. This is how we pay for one-to-one -one aid, okay. cafeteria workers, and bus drivers. That's how your taxes, I, I, and yes, I know it's not, you did your time. You did your time for 44 and years. I pay and my health insurance. I don't have a pension for anything. My husband and I both pay our own health insurance. We are on Social Security, and it should be that we have, in other words, we have done our service to Gloucester Township. Now it should be our time, and it's not. The recycling answer, Mr. Cardis, with our recycling? So, I've been here for a number of years. Uh, back in 1991, we, uh, we created what's called the Global Agreement. And what we did was we engaged the GTMUA, <coughs> took advantage of land that they owned, and we created a DEP uh, approved compost facility. <coughs> the, the Global Agreement contained three parts to it. One, that the MUA would pick up our recyclables, and we would provide the equipment to do that. Two, that they would pick up our grass. <coughs> and three, that they would receive and also pick up our leaves at certain points during the year. So within that global agreement, there are revenues generated from that compost site. And we are one of the only DEP approved compost sites around. So those that are disposing of their leaves legally are bringing them to our compost <coughs> I don't know whether they're taking them, others are taking them, the farmers or whatever. So, so that's part of how we save money. The other part is on the recyclables, we lower what we pay in tipping fees. Tipping fees right now are $60 a ton. So the more we can collect, and right now the recycling market for plastic bottles, cans, cardboard is not that great. It's, it's actually at a point right now where we're not making money we're, we're paying a little bit, bit of money to get rid of it. We're paying a lot less, a lot less than sixty dollars a ton taken into the land. So, in addition to that, the state of New Jersey, we have to keep meticulous records on everything we collect. I don't know what we collect, but what all the businesses collect, if it's privately picked up, all that information goes to the state, and then we get tonnage grants back. 
And so we're getting that money coming back, and that's going to offset tipping fees. That's going to help with the recycling cost. So these are areas that we are that we became involved in years ago. And several times through my career, I've gone out and I've priced what it would cost for a private contractor to come in and pick up our recyclables and pick up our grass, and it is astronomical, astronomical. Right now, we're, we're able to provide all those services for a little bit under $2 million. I can tell you, that would probably be close to $4 million, if, if it's not more. So that was an innovative way that we we came up with to drive down costs <coughs> and to increase the collection of recyclables and save money. But driving the cost down should lower the tax? You would think. But other things in that budget go up. And, and listen, the budget is simple to understand. There's one side is the revenues, the other side is the appropriation, and the plug figure is the taxation, the amount that we raise. And if those revenues go down, as the gentleman pointed out, that presents a problem for that, for that levy, and that's why that levy goes up. And if the appropriations stay the same or go up, that's another problem. If they go down, that's good. But that doesn't typically happen. Things keep going up. We just paid a $5 million, approximately $5 million. <coughs> That's a crying shame what the state did. That's a crying shame starting with Whitman. There are nine pensions in the state of New Jersey. Two of them are funded. The police and firemen and the PERS. The rest of them, the teachers, gone. They borrowed the money. They didn't borrow the money. They misappropriated them. They took that money, and that's why the pension system's in such disarray right now. It's a crying shame. I blame the state. Mr. Cardis, can you just ex uh, explain the way that we provide insurance to the employees of the town? Absolutely. Versus what it could be. Absolutely. We, recognizing that we had what I would consider rich benefits, and I'm going back years. I'm going back 15, 20 years. We decided the best thing to do is actually my predecessor who taught me, and he's the one that came up with the idea, and we just ran with it from there. We became self-insured. We became our own insurance company. So what we have is we have excess insurance. So we can take our benefits at any level. For example, there's six unions. Each union could have a different level of benefits, and they could all be funded under a self-funded plan where we have insurance and what I found is, based on looking at fully insured premiums, if we had gone to Aetna, Verizon, we would have never been able to keep our costs where they are right now. We are in the business of being our own insurance company. And that's one of the ideas that, that, that I've mentioned to, to the schools. We have the largest K-8 in the state of New Jersey. I think there's an opportunity down the line to get together and expand that self-funded environment. Take advantage of our numbers, economies of scale. And, and it's worked for us, and I think it would work for the entire town. So there are still ideas that, that, that we're coming up with and talking about. We just haven't, haven't gotten to the point where we've been able to implement all those things. But again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very dissatisfied with myself personally with how taxes are raised in the state of New Jersey. just think it's, it, it's a shame and it's not going to get any better, unfortunately, because that's the system that the state has decided will be in place, and there's no there's no apparent change. And unfortunately, you're going to have a lot of seniors that say, bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Sorry. And, and, thank and, you for your time. Thank I you, Ms. Over. Thank you for coming out this evening. Sir? In the back, in the Coke bottle. <laughs> Anthony, I'll get back to you when everyone else speaks. Thanks for coming out. Um, I have a couple questions. First question is uh, the uh, electric that we were forced to put, cut over to, to a third party provider. Where did that savings go? And then the other one, the other question I have is uh, property assessments. Can the council know anything about uh, the property assessments? Because uh, I know Gloucester County was highly over assessed due to the Gloucester uh, County, County Assessment Office. I don't know if that's Lombo or uh, whatever his name is. Well, 
Um, Whatever uh, yeah, but can they can can we go and do anything as a as a township since you guys were able to change our electric with no problem? Can we go in and, and force the county to reassess our properties <coughs> so we're not uh, such higher property assessment so our taxes would get lowered at that at that process? Um, Toby, with the first thing, the energy aggregation program. So if you're in the southern part of town, you're with Atlantic City Electric, correct? Um, any type of savings that would go into your pocket directly. The township didn't receive any type of savings from that. So each individual homeowner or lease home. So if there's any, so if there's any savings, uh, well, we had savings as a municipality. We had our own. We had our own. Right. Right. That was a lot of buildings the township has. So where is that savings? Yours and yours. If you were an ACE customer, if you're in PSAG, I would I would say you your savings on an annual basis was somewhere between seventy and a hundred dollars. That was already built into your. Bill. That was mine. I'm asking yours. You got all your building. You guys put solar on. We didn't get everything. Yeah, I had solar in my house. I know my my house goes eleven dollars a month. By aggregating the town, and again, anybody had the opportunity to opt out by aggregating the town. We're not saving money. No, no, you guys are saving money on your buildings, right? You guys, you guys took the tower and stuff. Okay, your buildings. We go to the county. The okay. county puts out for bid for electricity, natural <coughs> gas, and we participate in those bids. Okay. And and I can't tell you the exact amount we save, but we save money by being part of its economies of scale. We're, we're all going out for bid. Tom, is it possible you can provide that number? Um, I have to get from the county. I know, not now, but... Um, yeah. Uh, second, with the uh, he says, property revals or reassessment or reassessment, process? yeah. Okay, Tom, help me out. Uh, 2009, when we had a reval, yes, and we went through the process. For revaluation, the county tax board says to each municipality, <coughs> you have to do a revaluation of your properties in your in your municipality. At the time when we had a reval, um, I guess Dan was still on here. I think that was a, I want to say a $3 million project uh, that we had, we paid in uh, installments uh, dedicated to our budget. Uh, you, you financed it under the state guidelines, which was an emergency appropriation, which was financed over five years. At the time, it was probably, we were behind 15 years in doing a reval, and we were ordered by the King County uh, Tax Board to have that reval. So the last reval we had was, 2009-2010. And so we're about eight years out, eight years since So, so we're probably, if you go by, it's done every 10 years. Okay. 2020, we're supposedly due, or 2019. I'm not, so that's something that the county tax board notifies our municipality. Sometimes it's <coughs> Okay. That, that's a less costly approach to, to, to build. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt, but I mean, you, you, you have the opportunity to appeal your assessment. Oh, I have. Yeah, I have several times, yeah. So you have to remember that the assessor gets 15% plus or minus market value as a, as a margin of um, success okay. or error. I'd like to be able to be all 15% plus or minus. It doesn't, it doesn't have to. So it's very difficult. You, you really have to do your homework. You have to make sure you have competent deals to show. Yep. Uh, and so, there's a process. Right, it's a, it's absolutely. That's why I was asking as a township wide, could that be done um, to help lower the tax flow? Only as a reval or a reassessment. Okay. And, so, and it's costly. And so, the percentage of that property valuation in Foster Township is at 104% or 107% now? I forget what the actual percentage is. 102, 103. We're, we're, we're one of the highest. We're, we're in the top three, I remember it seeing on the list. So I just wondering, well, can, can that be lower to help drop taxes as well, too? Because I mean, it's, all of our taxes are based on a property assessment. So if we're taxing 107% of that property value, why can't we lower that to 8% and help burden us down to still have our bills? Yeah, so it's a Because if you lowered all the assessments, then, then the tax rates go. How is the tax rate going for the higher rate of assessed value? The further you spread the amount to be raised by taxation. That's why we just hired a company through an RPRQ to go and look at some businesses throughout the community, whether they be commercial, industrial, to determine whether or not they're properly assessed. This company is is aggressive and knowledgeable and has had a, a great deal of success in looking at companies and saying, no, 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 you're not supposed to be a $3 million. 
you're supposed to be a 4.5 fireman. And so if they're able to do that and raise those assessments, that helps you out as a taxpayer because it spreads out the <coughs> amount to be raised to the more ratables, to higher, higher ratables. So the, your, your solution is just lowering all the ratables? This drives the tax rate. Thank you. And if I could add one more thing with revals, Toby, there are some folks that do want their house uh, assessed, and there's some that don't want it because perhaps there were improvements that were made, and perhaps they didn't get the necessary permits. <coughs> perhaps they don't want their particular house to go up in value or lower value. There are issues. There are seniors that may say, you know what, this is what I'm paying, and I'm comfortable paying this. But that's something that when Kim County Tax Board says we have to adhere to that. Um, then that's something that we're going to have to do. I don't know. I can't forecast when that will happen, but norm it's supposedly supposed to be done with every 10 years. But prior to that, it was a 15-year period before we went out on the rebound. I don't like you because it costs money. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yes, sir. Mr. Keller, I'll get you after him. <laughs> I've got to commend you. You sat here for three and a half hours dancing very well. You tried to rip the top. I guess my point is, it's not a question, it's a point. My wife and I have X amount of dollars to spend. When we get to those X amount of dollars, we're the money. Maybe you should look, because I know what you're going to say, Tom. Maybe you should look at maybe spending less money. <laughs> It's not, it's not complicated. Try spending less money. Thank you. Teresa. 27 hours. Okay. Uh, Vincent Heller, 417 Hampton Lane. I know you're going to say the same thing as usual, Mr. Hutchinson, but is, are we able to have a mayor at one of these meetings that's not a fluff piece, that's not for a what was the last one for uh, some history month or they're giving out scout something for younger children they were giving awards is this companies aside from that you look you said mr hutchison but you're looking yeah, at you know, me well, because I, I know his, I, his answer last time is it's he doesn't need to be here okay. was the last time he gave us that so and you want to answer that yes have you addressed you mr keller this is a, uh, a legislative body this is not an executive branch uh you know if you look at the federal level it's it's very similar to what we have here. The president doesn't show up at the <coughs> congressional hearings or congressional meetings. So it's very similar. Okay. Now the president or the vice president may show up for ceremonial functions, and that's fine. But if the mayor shows up here, he's got to sit in a chair, and he's not going to participate. This is our meeting. And um, did I hear correctly we hired somebody to uh, auction off houses? Or was that something that I... That was just more propaganda than whoever else was supposed to have. Now, we had at the last meeting, uh, was it RFQ or we don't? No. We, are, we are looking for, no, we are looking to <coughs> engage in auctioneering. Yes. I, I, it, just to look at that from another set of eyes, I mean, if we, the payment tax towards a lie, they would be what need an auctioneer. Um, for our, we've stated that snow cleanup and snow cleanup has been a big part of our property tax increases over the years. Um, do we pay our people double time or, or for a certain storms if they're in an after storm or the day after? We do, we do not pay standby, if that's what you're talking about. We do pay time and a half. We do pay double time. It, it, it's all in accordance with the contractual obligation under the contract. Now, are we able to cut back on some of that stuff considering uh, we have a few of the trucks in here. I don't know if they're in our fleet or we outsource. We have a few in our fleet. No, we still need to outsource. The town is just too big. We're, there's, I think, 690 uh, uh, miles of roadway. It's just too much. I mean, we're, we, have, we have certain people, and I don't know who, the, who we had this winter for that. We had a few trucks getting stuck in, in the snow and other issues like that. I mean, snow plowing is always a nightmare. And, and, and our priority with our public works department is to make sure we get brine out, get sawed out, make sure that the police department can get in and out, make sure the rescue squads, the the fire, everybody needs to be able to, so safety is the priority. <coughs> but I mean, and then for the days after, where they're riding around with the snow plows up for 10 to 12 hours, I just didn't know if there's a way for us to come back on that, but I'm just patrolling the areas, or is that just? 
they're still working. And, and you know what? If there if there is imminent concern that there's another storm around the corner, we are not going to drop those plows down. That would that would not make any sense. Uh, I just, I just figured I'd ask a few questions. If you see one riding around, <laughs> come go Friday or Saturday. Let me know. And that's <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Vince. Get some sleep tonight. Anyone else? Mr. Hayden. Move Hi, David. Hey, Tom, I'm Village County. Very good. How are you? Uh, just a question. Property values in Boston Township aren't worth moving. The houses aren't selling. Uh, Highland Village alone, there are at least 35 houses that are either abandoned for sale. They're not moving. <coughs> The recycling uh, shredding event you had Saturday. I found some paperwork from 98. My tax paperwork, my taxes back then were 3200. My property value was about the same as it is today. And I'll pay only 7600 now. Uh, I'm on a fixed income. I'm sure a lot of people here are on a fixed income. Uh, every time you guys raise taxes, and it's not just, I know it's you, the township, the <coughs> board, the fire district. I have to cut, cut my budget. I think it's time that everybody considers cutting the budget. Especially senior citizens. Like the one lady over there said, the uh, senior citizens, she paid school taxes. I always thought that was something weird, and I have contacted Christy Todd, and, uh, Chris Christie, Murphy's office, and complained about that. <coughs> And actually spoke to one of uh, Murphy's uh, aides, Lisa, I didn't get the list, about that. And they said they, they, they would pass it on to the governor. But something like that, you know, cut, help the senior citizens out. Just we're on fixed income. And it, just a question is there anything here that any of us can say that would change your mind to maybe lower the rate from 7 8% to 6 5%? There are a lot of things that were said here today. That would you know, make you consider changing that, sir. And this is a discussion that we have to have as, as a body um, and have a discussion with the administration regarding some of the comments, a lot of the comments that we heard here today. And I understand that there are people that are hurting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and as I said earlier, no one wants to see a tax increase. It stinks, quite frankly. Well, I agree with that. But um, again, there are. You know, lights on, there are services that we provide, and then it gets into well, what services can you live or live without. Because a preschool program, that may not be important to you, but it may be important to Mr. Stanley there who has four kids, and he knows that the rec program, all my kids went through. I know, but, I'm saying, but the rec program is beneficial to him, you know, you, if you went down to Hyder Lane and played pinochle with some folks on Hyder Lane, you know, Mr. Sanders, like, I'm not going near, anywhere near Hyder Lane at any time soon. So there are different things that, that are offered to different parts of our community. And that's the challenging thing with administration and council is to say, okay, what is important? And um, because there are certain things that add to our quality of life here. Oh, and I agree. Flush Township, I think, it, it's, it's a nice community. Uh, some of the c conditions, like Black and Clement Road, that, that's a terrible disaster. You know, have to, uh, most of the stores are closed to work. <laughs> so, but uh, the police department's excellent. You know, and I feel it's a safe community. I know a couple of people commented, like the people. I didn't think that was appropriate. You know, I think it's a safe community. Uh, to prove that point, I don't know what the legality is. Uh, I know from my professional opinion, it's a safe community because I am a retired uh, law enforcement officer. Uh, uh, you know, I, I realize the township does it, but just to consider that there are people out there on fixed incomes. That's what that's all I'm saying. During the summertime, I think we came in contact. Well, you, you looked at my back, and it's still under discussion. Right. I mean, it, it's not perfect, but <coughs> public works came out there, right? They came out. They did cut the issue that I had that I showed you. They took care of. But right now, it's flooding. My point, though, for bringing that up is there are, right the service. Thank there are a tremendous amount of uh, requirements on our public works department. They are spread so thin. Um, they need more people. Our clerk's office, how many people are you down, Jens? You took it on the chin tonight. 
And you can't get your notes out because you are down two people. I didn't hear you say that, though. Okay? You can't do your job adequately because your office is understaffed. We are doing more with less. It just costs more. Every year it's costing more to provide government services. I don't want to raise your taxes. I promise you that. My wife has been listening to me complain for the better part of a week and a half, knowing that I was going to be here till 12 o'clock tonight, and I don't want to raise your stinking taxes. I listened to a guy on my phone today. He called me up, and he was almost in tears that his mortgage payment was going up $29 per month. <coughs> to, to a lot of people, $29 is a lot of dollars. Right. That's what yeah. Like Nancy Pelosi said, oh, crumbs, you know, when she said something about that people were saving a thousand dollars. Yet, yet, eight years ago, when they were saving $42 a month, she said it was the best thing. I'm telling you right now, we have, a, we have to do a balancing. And I've said this at different meetings. Some people don't like to hear the way I look at this, okay? But this is how I mean it. I've got to make this town, with the rest of this council and the administration, a place that people want to relocate to. Now, if I raise the taxes, it's less desirable. But if I provide the amenities, the safety, and the different things that go into it, and people are talking about Gloucester Township, then people are going to want to go here. So it's a balancing act, okay? What percentage, if I may, and I'm putting you on the spot, and I apologize if you don't have the details, okay? What percentage is the Public Works Department of our overall township budgets? Oh, I don't know. Budget 62 <coughs> so we're Probably about. Uh, I'm not including. I'm not including sanitation, collection, and trash. And, uh, if five percent. What's the What's the um, Give me the uh, police department. What's that percent of the? Uh, um, I mean, you have to. You have to look at uh, police salaries, other expenses, dispatch, other expenses from dispatch. I would say that the budget total is probably. How about this bill? What percentage? And I, and I, Dave, I know this is your time. I think it might benefit people if I, if I can make my point. The, the salaries in the township bill. What percentage? I don't. I, I really don't. But if you wanted to make a 10% cut in the overall township <coughs> budget, as one of the gentlemen said, it's, it, you know what? Where would you go? I'm not saying cut, it's a question. Hold it there, hold the line. That's different than what somebody else said, I think, okay? But it's virtually impossible. Am I correct? You I, have to I, lay I, it I, off. I don't, I'll be honest, I don't, I really don't know what to cut because I've been through this budget and and I will tell you there's very little in there that is, that is very helpful. Mostly, mostly it's contractual. It's contractual. <coughs> and, 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 what are you going to do? Collect trash once every two weeks? That's not. That's you, in order to have a meaningful tax reduction, I'm going to say this. Hold the line. But even to hold the line, given the fact that I think we negotiated all of our contracts, to hold the line, you would have to still lay off <coughs> a significant number of people. And the layoff would come from the bottom paid salary. You have under civil service because we are a department of the labor civil service. That can't change because once you're in, you're in, you can't get out. Um, I guess I kind of took my hand this way. So you know what? Once you're in, you, you have to follow the guidelines. The guidelines are to follow the civil service. All your part time go, all your attempts go, all your newest hires go, and it takes a long time to get to where you're at. Even if you look at the biggest ones, you're going to be looking at your newest hires, and it just does not come. You're going to have to go through your department. You're going to have to go through your, that, that's all, all going to have to be done. Uh, specials. So Dave, so Dave. You don't want to cut police because just to hire a police officer, you're 
You're talking probably $100,000. And you, that's, not, that's not the demand. It's not, you can't, the demand for the <coughs> services is there. It's real. This right. is it. This is a city. You live in a city. Yeah, I get it. There's six, seven zip codes. But what police car pulls up wherever you're at? Oh, I, I the, the it's a city. Car. You live in a city. <coughs> this is a city. And it has real city problems, crime problems, drug problems. How much and, and, and you know I went to the academy with Captain Manon. And, and we're trying to protect this city. Well, my job is to make this city as safe as I can at, at, at the most reasonable cost. And I will tell you, it is, it, it is a challenge. It's a challenge. What we do with the health benefits is an example of, of going that extra step to, to, to try to control costs. You know, combining with Jerry Hill to go out for, for trash collection and disposal. I mean, we're, we are thinking outside the box. We do a lot of stuff that other, other places don't do. We help other communities with shared service agreements. We charge an administrative fee to do that. We're number one priority. We don't do theirs until ours are done. You know? We buy gas jointly with the schools. We do these things. There are things that we are doing every year to try to save money. But it's just trying to say, hold the line or see if there's anything you can do that instead of an 8%, uh, I know a couple years ago it was a 12%. It's frustrating. It's, it's very, very frustrating. Please, when you see our blank stare up here, please don't think that we don't care. We care. It, it's just, it's frustrating to us. It really is. Yeah, I, I know when you came over, when you were, when you were soliciting votes, and I, I showed you a problem behind it, it's taken care of. It's been a week. And I appreciate you. You understand? Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, we'll be second. This gentleman back will be third. Okay? Ma'am, it'll be great. It'll be great. Yes, you're up. I'm sorry to point at you. Yeah, the music is best by that time. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not the other. <laughs> right. yeah. Judy Jones, 65, Chatham Room, Summerdale. Hi, Miss June. <laughs> I back up to the uh, famous Owens pointing out the interest in front of the council. I was under that. Only took me two years to win, but we, we did win. Um, that the property, um, the township owns that property behind me. Now, when I first got my house, I paid twelve hundred dollars a year in taxes, and I was worried that I was a, what's it going to be. I now pay almost ten thousand dollars a year in taxes. Okay, I got all these wonderful services. However, when I look at my backyard, at my, my kitchen window there, and I look at my backyard, I see this humongous stack of old, dilapidated, run, broken down trees that the road department came, the road, uh, road, Kevin Bucciaroni came, <coughs> a great guy, he reacted within 20 minutes when I called. And it was, it was the year, about three years ago, we had this directio that went through with the wind, and there were some dangerous trees dangling like this, and he showed up uh, within 30 minutes. And so they did a great job, and they brought that little mini bulldozer thing in, and they knocked down all the trees that were dangerous, and he said, don't worry about this, we're going to come back. That was about three years ago. <laughs> so now I'm looking at an 8% increase in my taxes, and I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to put my house up for sale. Who's going to buy my house when they're looking at the Gloucester Township bonfire pile in the back of my yard? That's what it looks like. It looks like a giant bonfire mishmash. Or the Wolk. I got the chat. Judy Jones and Channel 30, 31. I've called 625 Chatham. Chatham Road, and I've called Kevin. He doesn't answer anymore. Okay, Kevin will call I you went, tomorrow. And I Kevin, went, I Kevin went will call to you mayor. tomorrow, and Mr. Cardis will call you tomorrow. I went to the mayor's office, and nothing happened after that either. Ms. Jones, can you come up and provide your phone number? Sure. It looks a mess. <laughs> Giant bonfire. That's what it looks like. I'm never going to sell my house. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Miss Jones. You'll get a call tomorrow. Wow. Thank you. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> <Ma 'am. laughs> Thank you. All right, Anthony. All right. Later on this evening. I mean, later on today. Charles Burley, Foxwood Court. It's really nice to see you again. Thank you. Uh, what I was to pass on during this, is this council the people who have the last say in this budget? I mean, you're the ones that are going to pass this budget, yes. right? And that includes the fire districts. No, just, just the municipality. So um, just 27 cents of each dollar. That's, what, that's our saying. How do we uh, have any say in the other budgets? Uh, they're, they're elected officials at the Gloucester Township Public Schools, elected officials at the Black Horse Pike Regional District. Uh, you live in the southern part of town, correct? <coughs> so you may have Erie or Lambs Terrace as your fire district. Uh, county, Canham County Freeholders, they have their meetings and they publicize it uh, on a monthly basis. Those are the, in, the taxing entities as uh, part of your tax. Uh, you say you want affordable housing, you know, you want to supply people with affordable housing in this uh, township. However, with these tax increases, it's not affordable for the people who've lived here all the time. I mean, we're being thrown out of our houses, literally. <laughs> children, 900 children that are in that school. Well, why isn't the roof held accountable? And that's, that's a discussion you have to have with the Board of Ed regarding their decision on that roof. But that roof um, was necessary for that particular building. Well, maybe you should use that Angie's list when you guys hire me. Because <laughs> <laughs> whoever you're hiring does some shoddy work. That's how to do something. Thank you, Mr. Burley. Tell me that. Her family's house. 
So we raised our children on Oaks and raised how I was living. And we grew up, because she grew up on the other side of my house, two sides of my house. It's sad that I can't give my kids the childhood I had because you've priced me out of this entire district. I do well for myself, but I can't provide for my kids and my wife the way I want to because I'm paying more in taxes than I'm paying on my mortgage. <clears throat> I can't take my kids out because I gotta think. I gotta think of how am I supposed to pay the mortgage to this one? Because that paycheck went towards just my mortgage. Now I gotta pay my bills with the next paycheck. It's sad because I can't even justify paying these taxes on my small piece of land when I have friends that are paying just as much taxes as I am, and they have two times the land I do. You keep saying we have great services, but yet I'm sadder in this town now than I was when I was a child. I felt like I had more services when I was a kid. I felt like the town, I could get on my bike and drive, ride around. I don't see that anymore. You know why? Because families can't afford to live here anymore. And it's sad. It's just, it's, just, it's just sad. My brother is a police officer in this town. I think the cops are unbelievable. Half my friends are cops. They can't afford to live here either. I mean, you're, you're pricing everyone right out of this town. This is a beautiful town. It's a great town. I love this town. It's going to be sad when I leave. That's all I have. Thank you. I want to thank the gentleman passing out water out to the audience, sir. Thank you very much. Very kind. Good evening, Council. William McCauley. McCauley, how are you? Nice to see you again. Little Boston Road, also known as the official home of the Philadelphia Soul. Uh, I think it's no surprise. I don't necessarily agree with um, many of your stances on a lot of things, but I will commend you, and I can appreciate the constraints you operate under as a government. I would submit to uh, my fellow citizens, I don't want to be on my soapbox and preach, but we hear we need high taxes for higher services. So I think it's not six people's responsibility to figure out what those essential services are, but rather are. So if there's things that are important to us as a community, I think we should take the leeway to do them ourselves so that taxes can be lowered. Policemen, schools, all of that, we all agree are essential. The P knuckle at the senior citizen, if that is essential, I think people should step up to the plate. So I don't want to preach to everybody else, but you can't have tremendous services and low taxes. And I think that's what <coughs> has been trying to be conveyed to us, which I fully appreciate, but um, I'm a small government guy. I think citizens should um, take more responsibility, and I hope and I'm encouraged that there's a lot of people here that we want to provide these things, and I think we should do so as a community. Council, again, I don't agree with a lot that you uh, do at all, but I can definitely appreciate the incentives and constraints that you work under, and I know you're doing your best, so I just want to thank you and fellow citizens, and uh, that's it for my service. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Yeah. Gentleman in the Eagles hat. Joseph, you lost four city creek drive. Uh, I've been struggling the last couple of years. Divorce, uh, injury, I'm out. Collecting Social Security now, file for disability. Very limited. <clears throat> Even in these last couple of years, the increases have come across five, six, seven hours. It's like, that's it. I'm just, just, just I'm by myself. I've been here for 38 years. And it's just, I'm going to have to find myself in the house. I don't know what I'm going to move to. I traveled around when I was working, and 
all around the country in taxes. I never seen it. Maybe you go to California or, or New York, uh, some of the other big cities. But uh, it's a little bit more high. And uh, there's people on my own Glen Oaks. I walk around Glen Oaks now, I cry sometimes because like, some of the houses are like, deteriorating to the point where, you know, I can do a lot of streets. Susan Krieger's like, I think there's a couple of bands that walk around the street. Yeah, you know, I walk through the neighborhood and people can't afford to keep their houses up. They're struggling. And you can see the street of the houses. It's all apart. And the taxes keep going up. I mean, and there's also a employment option, too, there for people who struggle with the recession, it's just, which is not over there as well. It depends on how to work the numbers. <coughs> but, uh, but, yeah, 38 years ago now, I raised my kids here. Nice place to grow up. There's this, it's like getting that range is now. Name the seniors. And when I worked, things got bad, they laid off. That's the way it went. Well, we can't afford to let the income to afford you anymore. Now we have. And I think that's an option. The other option is maybe a wage tax. I mean, you know, if you're some of the higher income people in the county that can afford to do it, we're ready to get it. Tax on it, because that's a wage tax. A lot of big cities and some of the suburbs have a huge tax in Pennsylvania. And I think that might be a possible hell. But I mean, not for the low income people. I mean, it's just, uh, the average guy. You've got to be careful with people in this county. So just, but you've got to do something. I mean, it's just, it's, it's into the point now where people are just, yeah, you're hurting. It's not just, I, mean, I know you guys got your hands kind of tied. But, you can't sit there and say, well, we're just going to keep going out, going out, going out. Yeah. Go, to this, go to this track. You guys got the power. You can get all, your, all the different uh, governments, mayors around here, and then go up there and start kicking some ass. You just can't afford it. <laughs> I mean, that's just no way to do it. Huh? And we have good people in the, in the, in the county. The cops are good. God knows if my house comes down, I was in the bush. You know? <laughs> but they, they, were, they, were, they were all right. <coughs> <laughs> and they got a tough job, but uh, but still we can't. You know, people can't afford so much. And you gotta you gotta do something. It's just it's just you know turn like some of the old people are trying to you know turn into slaves and just working to pay your freaking taxes. You know, George White. You know, so you know, at this point, I'm hoping that just pure ID. I'm trying to like, I'm trying to get disability, which is a big problem. And it's, uh, I don't know, Dan. You've been here a long time. You know? <laughs> Yes, guys here, you know, you don't, you know, we're hurting, you know? They've been around for a long time. You know, vote for all you guys, you know. I think I did. <laughs> it's just fun. But you got to do something. You just, you just can't sit there and say, oh, you know, you've got to lay people off, you've got to lay them off. I mean, it's just, you know, somebody has to do something. Yeah, we're going to waste time. And that's also, Mr. Uos, that's also Catch-22. You have residents that do work for uh, our municipality here, residents that work in our school district. And if you lay off those individuals, they're going to be in a certain situation. And it's, yes, it's, it's easy to say, let's get rid of folks, but um, one penny is $430,000. $430, so if we were to knock off a penny, so we're at 7.9, and bring it down to 6.9, we have to find, we have to wait to have to cut $430, $430,000 from this budget. So if you have employees, That's well, this if you have this services, those are things that all the information that we've gathered here, the comments that we've had, these are discussions that we have to have. And there may, there may have to be some hard truths that we're going to have to acknowledge. And we're going, to have, we're going to have to have some adult conversations with our colleagues and also with our residents about um, what we can provide and what we can't provide. We may have to come back. I mean, we didn't have all, yeah, we didn't have all these recreation things. I just want to see my But does it add to our community, those recreational? Oh, yeah, but, but if you go, when you go I, by Veterans Park on we, Thursday, it's going to be really nice. And Friday, the weather's going to be 70 degrees. Right. And when people go by Veterans Park, and you see Veterans Park, and that place is packed. I know, the park's nice, yeah. But 
people that's not walking that's around, young, not, old, can't, black, can't white, green, but that's part of our community. Right. Thank you very well, much. We did it out, uh, you know, we did it out years ago, so. It is nice. You can't afford it. Okay. Thank you, Joe. Is there anyone else? The lady here in the shirt here. Anthony, you have to wait till everyone's done. You spoke before. I'm sorry. Brad Paisley. Okay. <laughs> Great to see you. Um, my name is Susan Sleeve, and I live at 306 Dearborn Avenue. And um, we've lived here probably since my daughter's been 18 months old. She's 21 now. And I have some concerns about our taxes going up, especially 8%. And I'm a stay-at-home mom. I like to be there for my kids. I'm very blessed that my husband does a good job. And um, but one of my concerns was, you know, everybody says that Gloucester Township has a lot to offer. Yes, they have nice parks, and but I live where Davis Town, like Davis Town Road, is right behind me, and there's the Sam's Bar and Grill there, and they're supposed to be redoing the storefront there. And I feel like it's been like three years, and things are at a standstill there. And I, I'm close to the Kmart Shopping Center there, and everywhere I look around. You know, there's there's a storefront closed, and I was just at the our tax dollars are paying for the outlets for the next ten years, and you know I was just at the outlets not that long ago, and I see stores that there were a lot more stores there before, and it seems like people are you know just backing out of their leases or whatever, and so that's that's a concern of mine, and I kind of would like to know. What's going to be done with, you know, the Sands Bar Grill? Because I don't feel like, and that whole storefront plaza there, because I feel like nothing's been done there recently, and there's some street lights that are out too, along closer down to where the front, where the sign there, where the um, outlets are. I, I think a tree fell on one or something, and the light is smashed or whatever. But I just look around and I think, wait, there's, you know, so many houses, like foreclosures, like people, you know, are talking about, or empty storefronts, you know, look at the Kmart, and even some restaurants, even on Black and Columbus Road. And I think, what can we do, you know, with those, is there anything we can do, you know, with those properties there, you know? And as far as, you know, make the township look nicer or, you know, just offer more to the community, you know. All right, so, so, uh, can I address some of your questions? Okay. Uh, you're not paying for the outlets for 10 years. They have a, a pilot program. They pay full taxes on the parcel of land that they're on. That property is assessed at roughly $46 million. Um, and they are paying taxes on the land, full freight. And they're now in year three of paying their taxes. So they're paying 50% of their taxes. In two years, they'll be paying 100%. Um, the Sam's Bar and Grill, I agree with you. It is the, that Dunkin' Donuts, it, it, it was. <coughs> Mr. Lackner, what did it take? Three years for a Dunkin' Donuts? People, when they were pining for that Dunkin' Donuts. Could you provide us an update on <coughs> what's happening there? He's our director of community development. He works with our construction office. But is it at a standstill? Because the facade there has remained the same for, for quite some time. Years, at least three years, I think. Well, the site plan approval to talk about it has been constructed. Right. That's up. All the landscaping, the streetscaping has been done on the sidewalks on the black horse plants, the streetscaping on Davis Town Road, the landscaping is all in. So now we're at the facade now. As far as I know, I just don't know why. Right. Instead of you know, oh, I just don't know. Okay. Because it doesn't look any better than what it, you know, I feel like it doesn't. And the and the parking lot there, to my knowledge, is it's still kind of 
torn up in some of the places, or it's like grassy areas, or it's supposed to be parking spots. <clears throat> I just don't understand, you know. It just seems like in no time the outlets were up, and you know, it's taken forever for that to even, you know. It's, it's a different developer. Um, but going back to you mean the township doesn't have any say, like as far as there are certain, uh, you know, when Mr. Lechner was talking about he could check into their approvals, and um, but you know, if there's a code enforcement issue, that's something that could be enforced, but. If he's working at a snail's pace, the Kmart. I was sad. To see, I went there if I needed, you know, an, an iron. I'm an ironer. My iron breaks, or I needed something because I go to the gym in that plaza. Um, but that's big box retail. <laughs> And that's not something that, uh, when they announced that they were closing, there was more people in that parking lot when it was closing, that particular Kmart. It was there for close to a little bit over 40 years. Um, but that was a nationwide problem. Um, you look at some of the uh, properties. Um, the other day, my son and I, um, the lights were, it was dark at the Denny's. And I said, oh, please, uh, I hope they didn't close, because the Denny's in Washington Township closed on 42. But then you take a look at the business model. And I'm not disparaging Denny's, but if I go to the lamp post or the meadows, my quality food is a little bit better and my service is a little bit better. Um, the, uh, the ice cream place, Friendly's. You know, this is something that you take a look at a business model and what appeals to folks. You have Cotardo's that's been in that plaza for over 30 something years. You have Philomena's, where that has a draw the big crowd there. You know, it, I think it comes down to the business model, what people are looking for, um, and what interests people. And so a lot of the developments, if you're going down Blackwood Clemens Road on the left-hand side, um, there is a term they use, they call it gray, uh, gray fields, where old um, properties because uh, if you go down Clementon Road, there used to be a, a W Grant. Uh, is it any, anyone remember the Grant? Uh, what was it? The retail place? W.T. Grant. Where you have uh, certain police departments go out there and practice how to, do, how to drive uh, because that was so far back and had a huge parking lot. But that's how some of these uh, developments, these commercial properties, were developed. And that was that same model that was on Black and Clementon Road. Um, and we had studies done where we said, you know what, maybe you know, we need to have move some of these properties closer to Blackwood Clementon Road so people see that. Where the Little Caesars is at, they did a facade improvement program there. Um, but then there needs to be businesses that people are going to frequent. And it goes down to, I guess, a business model and what people want. Um, with the Kmart, I hate to see that it's, it's there. It's been a year. The township, the township can't use that property and have, you know, purchase it or, you know, tear those buildings down and so, something else. So Susan, I'm not being smart when I say this. I, twice we've been told to buy things and then people tell us don't spend things. <laughs> they want us to buy the affordable housing place. It just, they want me know, to buy the Kmart. Like, I would love. It's an eyesore. This is me thinking out loud. But if anyone's gone to the Cinemark, I like cheap movies, the Cinemark. And the Cinemark stayed there for years and there was nothing around it. And they redeveloped that area there. But the thing is, you know, for, for that Kmart property, there has to be an interested party in redeveloping that particular. That's a big parcel. That's a big square footage building. Um, so I, where the old uh, Superfresh is, if you notice, that was knocked down, and there's going to be a Royal Farms there. Okay, so there's some activity there. Lidl is coming to Blackwood Clementon Road. Lidl is a competitor. Uh, it's a European company, uh, a supermarket, um, where it's uh, considered more affordable. Um, but those are some of the things and the challenges that we have as a township. I would love to have it a flurry of stores there. But when you go down, let's be frank, if you go down the Washington Township on 42, it looks very similar to what we have in Blackwood Clementon Road. So, I hope I answered your questions, Susan. Right, but um, I'll try to give you an update. If you can give your phone number up here on Sands Bar and Grill, I, yeah, I agree. I agree with everything you said on that.
Yes, ma'am. Okay, show of hands, how many more folks want to speak so I can I, I get everybody? Okay, Miss, you, you, oh, okay. Gentlemen in the back, Mr. Polidoro, you'll finish up for the evening. Anthony, you want to go again after Mr. Polidoro? Okay, oh, I'm sorry. Sir, can she jump in front of you? I'm sorry. <laughs> My name is Renee Price. I live in 29 Roosevelt, and I and I should know this answer, but I don't. So because I didn't read the newsletter or what have you, but tell me a little bit about the open space that just got not just got finished, but on Summerdale Road. Can you just explain to me what is that to be used for? That that particular part. Yeah, that particular part. What? So how did it come to be? How much did it cost? Our I'm, I'm going to tell you how it came to be. What's our maintenance on that for the rest of it? So when that was brought up, I had a conversation with the mayor, and I said, "What what's going on there? I'm hearing about this particular park here." Is that and that's township owned? Yeah. Right? Uh, land is township owned. So this was brought to him by the historical society who had talked about having, because if you stand in that particular property, you see the back of Gabriel Davies Tavern. Oh, okay. Right. You see the, front. the front? Oh, the front, okay. So you're seeing Glendora. And they thought it would be wonderful to have information there to talk about the history of Gloucester Township. Now I know, and I'm sure I share this with everybody here, there's some challenges there. I don't foresee a lot of people parking there. I know when I put, um, I organized the township's 5K race, and I put a 5K race sign there, and I, I got to get in and out of there because I may get hit on Summerdale Road. Anyone who lives on Summerdale Road and travels that road, you're making that left or right out of there. It's you got to move quickly. Um, the work was done all within the township through public works, so it wasn't outsourced. Correct, Mr. Cardis? That's correct. Yeah, it was done. So it was within their hourly. Like, so if they work 40 hours a week, that was their job that day. All right. Like, they were taken off another job, put them to this job. So wait, so before you answer, did the historical <coughs> society put it together, or was the township who paid to put it together? It was just the no, historical the historical society is part of our idea. township. It's right. an advisory board. Right, but they, that was just their idea. <coughs> to pres that's what they wanted to do. That was a suggestion. Okay. And right. The mayor says, you know what, this sure, is something that we can do. Use this area because it's a historical area. Okay, so then Public Works comes in during their regular business hours, and they are taken off of another job, and they do this within company time, correct? Well, when you say taken off another job, there is a group of folks that are dedicated to doing some of this hardscaping throughout our township. They're all the parks. Yeah, so okay, that's you, part of their That's part of parts of recreation. Okay, okay. So then, so then it, it's completed now, correct? So, I'm going to ask Mr. Carson if it um, is fully completed because I mean, uh, one, one of the thoughts, and I don't, I don't know whether where, where we are in terms of pursuing, but one of the thoughts was we have cameras located in the front of the Gable Davies Tavern because it is a it is a major asset to this community. I mean, it is it is our, probably our most significant historical site in Gloucester Township. One of the thoughts was to clear some of the trees and the foliage to, 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 and then light up the front of the Gable Davies Tavern so you would be able to actually see the Gable Davies Tavern from somewhere else. Right now, we haven't gone anywhere in terms of um, any cost estimates or any of that stuff. And I don't even know if that will get off the ground. But I mean, as Orlando, as I said to Orlando, the front of that building actually faces some have to wait until the, you know, as we are right now, coming off of winter where it, it's bare enough that you can't see it, it kind of sits on an angle, but, you know, if some of that were cleared out and were lit up, it, it would be very nice. Because that, that place is owned by the township. township, that's a historical site that's owned by the township, so is that... Built in 1756. That, right, so is that, um, is that maintenance or is that kept by public works? Who continues to, all that is I would say it's works. kept, it's kept by both public works and the historic society. Okay, in our we do, the, we do the maintenance, um, we apply for grants, um, we handle
handled the HVAC. Uh, any, any concerns? I mean, it's an old building, so it right. requires a lot of maintenance. But the historic committee keeps it nice and clean, and they run events there. So the proposal is to add the lights, maybe. So, maybe. so with that said, how will we, as the residents, know? Is that going to be in the newsletter, like here he, here he? We're going to take a bite, a vote on this. Does, do you folks want to do that, or is that like, no, nah, we're, you know, that's a done deal. We're going to like, do we get to vote on that? Again, it hasn't gone anywhere other right. than just a superficial discussion. Right. But if it does, does it go to vote through the residents, or is it just? At the council level, I, I don't want to. It's through administration. They would um, put it, you know, it's a resolution and it goes to the council. It's usually included in a budget. It could be in a capital budget. In, the ca in our capital budget, that's when we make our purchases for our police vehicles, sidewalk improvements, street improvements, um, parks, enhancement to our parks. Um, going back to open space, we talked about open space about four hours ago in this meeting. No, we talked about open space. Um, some of that open space tax that is used, that's for the upkeep of some of these properties that we have. Sure, sure. And that's right. One of and if I can throw in a, a, a plug for Ms. Carr, who's part of the Historical Society, right. she's sitting over there with this. They, they're having a colonial reenactment there. two weeks from now on they're April on 21st and 22nd. <laughs> and there's going to be hatchet throwing okay. and uh, archery. archery. And, and that's, right. you know. That's another activity that is funded through the township. Right, and so will they have the police um, making sure people can get in and out of there safely onto the busy roads? Yep. Yeah. Oh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's in Glendora off 4th Avenue. So if you've never been there. And it's a free event. The, 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 where Gabriel Davies right, Tavern. Right, right, right. And I'm talking about the Summerdale. Right, I know. Oh, Summerdale. You're talking about the site is, you're talking about they're hosting it on their, right. Yeah, so I was their, talking about Gabriel Davies. Yeah. No, we're back to Summerdale? Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, thank you for your question. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, John Campanella, 213 Downing Road, Summerdale, New Jersey. We're a question about the vacant homes. Uh, there's a lot of vacant homes in the township. How is the, town, is the township collecting taxes on those on those vacant homes? Yes, we are, sir. When people walk away. Who pays those taxes? Uh, the bank. Or, the uh, bank. They pay the full tax? The bank is paying. There's a lien that's put on that particular property. If we have to cut the grass, there's a lien. Mm -hmm. uh, we had, uh, about a year ago, uh, had a resolution to enter into agreement with a company that will help us locate uh, the homeowners or the bank owner um, so that we could recoup taxes for that particular property. So, what was the name of it? So that's one of the issues that we had, is that you couldn't identify who the property owner was. Um, but if there's a lien put against it and that house sells, um, you know, there's a lien that the township would recover. Uh, but yes, taxes are collected on it. Okay. Would the township consider waiving property taxes for uh, people that want to buy those homes and fix them up and sell them uh, to improve the community? Because a lot of times they keep going down, down, down. Uh, and it's hard to buy a home and fix it up when you're paying eight thousand dollars in property taxes on it while you're fixing it up. Would the township ever consider waiving the property taxes like you might do for a business? Mr. Carver, is that something that is? I'm just I'm yeah. t legally it's just because. Just a, uh, my, my first reaction is no. The first reaction is no. Right. But uh, it's an interesting question. I can do a little research on it. But first reaction is the township would not have the ability to waive taxes. Uh, on property. Uh, you always look for creative incentives, and I will check with the well, yeah, statutes and, uh, and Trenton and see if something's out there. But I doubt. I, mean, I would highly doubt that. But I think the city of Camden may have done something which is interesting. Well, maybe that because was parcels of land. And if you took care of that parcel of land next to you, there's a big lot, you were able to claim it as your own. <laughs> But it would just be an incentive for someone to buy a house, fix it up, and then, you know, it takes time to fix up a house and sell it. John, the problem is this. The taxes are getting paid, right. okay? So what you're saying is, let's forgive something that's being paid because we, we place a higher priority on fixing the property, rehabilitating it so the overall community improves. Um, interesting idea, but competing considerations. Right. Um, but I think the city of Camden 
did something with regard to um, tax things. They had a company come in and get properties where the uh, where nobody was going to pay the tax next man. Yeah. And I think that something happened there, but again, it's a little different. But it, it does seem like you, you wouldn't get your property tax until that property is finally done sell. These properties are vacant for two, three, four years. So. But you get what, where there's tax sales, John. Right. The town gets the money. I got you. Okay. And I think that was my question. Right, there's a program where if there are liens against the property, you can come in and fix the property up and get your money back by some. I don't know anything that's really about it. I read about it a couple of years ago. Maybe it's a little familiar. Yeah, there's there's an abandoned property statute in New Jersey. Uh, last few years gives municipalities to go a right to go in. Uh, petition the court, Chancery Court, to get an order allowing the municipality to take over the property that's abandoned. Uh, they notice the mortgage holders, and if they don't respond, then the court will rule in the municipality's favor. The municipality then can go in and recondition. Uh, there's got to be a, a certain criteria that we file, file uh, and follow and report to the courts. And when, if we're meeting our standards, uh, when we're completed, the township can then go back to the courts, and we have to notify property owners, we have to notify mortgage holders, and if no one responds, the court can make a determination and it becomes township owned. So there's procedures you have to go through on that abandoned property. And one, one other question. When, when residents see a dilapidated home that's abandoned, that is in need of grass cutting repairs, or who, who would we notify? Uh, you contact uh, Public Works. Uh, there is, you can go code enforcement, but also you can on the website, you can uh, identify that particular property. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, John. Have a great evening. Sir, you spoke already. I'm going to get to Mr. Polidoro. Or Mr. Polidoro. If that man gave out water, he's going before me. Ray, yes. come up, Mr. Polidoro. All right. <laughs> Good evening, Council. Ray Polidoro from the historic village of Ariel. I see. Good evening. It seems like uh, when your garage is a mess, the best way to clean it out and stake everything out of the garage and throw up the driveway, you put back only what you need, what you want, what needs to get thrown out, what you don't need anymore, what's never going to get used. That being said, have we ever looked at a zero-based budget? Take a look at, start from zero. No, I, I don't. How are you? Would you like I to fix appliances out? for the I do not. I understand. Tom, but what you I'm not about? that good at Tom, numbers. Tom, Tom, let him finish. I'm not that good at numbers. You're I only asked you. Tom, 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 can you let him finish? Please? I only asked about a method, not what you would put in and throw Tom, out. Okay? No need to get on the defensive. I just don't know what a zero based budget would do, what's been around for a lot of years, what maybe outlived its usefulness. And take a look at that. It's a yes or no question. Have you ever looked at that oh, approach? Yes. I'm sorry? I'm open to suggestions. Okay. One of the things that was a little disappointing, I had no intention of speaking tonight. I was... I doubt that, Ray. <laughs> Ray and I are friends. We've been here a long time. I doubt that, Ray. I was enjoying watching people get up and speak. Unfortunately, the most disappointing part of that, most half of the crowd was out in the hallway and out in the parking lot. Earlier in the night, I had asked you, about opening the public portion, and you were very gracious to do so. I also said that I believed that a change of venue would be necessary. There's a lot of people that did not get to come in this room and got tired and left. There are people that were here tonight that got tired and left. I remember there was a time when you would have a council meeting on the budget, and I remember having my thoughts about your budget meeting being at 6.30 or 6 o'clock maybe the, the, the strategy of having it that early and racing home to get changed, forget about eating, and come and listen to the meeting on the budget. Would it be possible to take that budget and have a single meeting on that and move that to a place where more people can attend and fit comfortably and speak and ask these questions? It's still two weeks away, and we know that we have utilized Timber Creek before for council meetings and it seems like it would be in the favor, uh, the better favor of the people, that the meeting would work out in their favor rather than everyone sitting here as tired as they are and people leaving. Is, 
I didn't hear an answer or maybe the openness to that. Oh, I, I said I would consider that, um, but Ray, I don't recall, um, I've been here 14 years, having six o'clock budget meetings. They were 7.30. There's, there been, there's been times I got, I got an old colleague, a former colleague in the, in the room here. Shelly, do you recall six o'clock board meetings, budget meetings? I remember we had meetings. With me years. or prior to me? Um, could be prior to Okay. Right. So. And again, whatever the case But no, I, I would consider that uh, there are some logistical things that um, we have to consider. We have live streaming that takes place here where residents who cannot come here do it. And I know, Ray, you provide a service, but you also edit your service. Edit what? Your videos. My videos are... are no, uh, you don't. I, no, you no, don't, no. If, you, if somebody takes a clip of a video, my videos... I've play. been the star of some of your videos. So, uh, no, that's... Uh, my um, videos play out. If you watch the whole video, there are clips that people take and do something with But there are some logistics. And, and I will as well, but I don't edit my videos. That is a but joke. Again, but again, that is um, a sixty dollar joke. Well, I'll take it under consideration. Okay. Would you like to give your email address out, maybe uh, let the people weigh in on Oh, it's on the website, omercado at glowtwit.com. That's an excellent idea. Maybe the people will weigh in on that. Maybe we'll see Absolutely. you soon. <laughs> Thank you for hanging in there tonight. Uh, admire your uh, your courage for facing the questions as well. Thank you. Have a great evening. Do we have anyone else? Said, gentlemen, I saw your hand here. Um, just a show of hands. I know we're getting late here. I can keep going, but I just want to see how many folks will want to speak that have not spoken already. So we got Miss Carr. Uh, we have uh, Paul with the water, and Mr. Miller. After Mr. Miller, so three more speakers, and then we're gonna. Um, well, happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, then we'll wrap it up. Christopher for Beaver. I live at 29 Roosevelt Drive. I don't know any of you other than maybe Mr. Hutchison. I chased him down the street. He was running so hard trying to get away from me. I remember. Because <laughs> I was talking to him about how uh, wonderfully excited I was about the new taxes that were fixing to come up. Oh, I thought as a kid. Because he, uh, he was a knucklehead when he was younger. Yeah. Uh, I had to chase him down the street. Any rate, uh, just to bring up the point which my wife brought up, uh, reference the park or whatever you call that thing, which is like the Indy 500 in front of it, uh, has no vegetate nothing it's about what did this wonderful idea cost us um, I don't know why I asked that is why some of us are now looking for our next meal ie especially when we're looking at an eight percent tax increase damn I mean how can we go out and spend I, I have to say it's discretionary right funds on something like that when you have people in here that are looking for the next meal, and now you're going to tax them again, and yet we can go out and spend money like that? I'm just lost. How? Why? Tom, I think I asked what the cost on that. Yes. Okay. Uh, we pass this twice a day because it's like the Indy 500 coming in front of it. There's no foliage, no vegetation. I have yet to see one vehicle and or even one person in there. Total, complete waste of money. Christopher, if all right, I'm just going to put a dollar amount on it. Let's say it's $100,000. And that project didn't move forward. Let's say we never did that project. In a $62 million budget, how much is that in a budget? Well, it's, it's not the amount. It's just, but, it's but it's still money. It's money. It, 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 I gotta say, money. And Christopher, I'm not saying... I'm not saying it costs a hundred thousand dollars, but these well, are I'm things. Sure more than that, yeah. But also, again, when I talked about what a penny costs, it costs us four hundred thirty thousand dollars. So to reduce the budget by one penny, okay. we're at seven point nine. We'd have to reduce four hundred. We have to find four hundred thirty thousand dollars. That's one penny. A lot of things. You go to two pennies, eight hundred sixty thousand. Well, I sit down and write out my budget every month. Wait a minute, we can't go to move, we can't do this, we can't do that, because we have to pay this, 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 and this. And now, not only myself, but everyone behind me is faced with yet another catastrophic increase. We have to watch our budgets. I, I just, when I see something, I just go into a rage, I'm going to switch the wife. You can ask me. Every time I pass that park, 
I just saw her right. smile. So colossal, waste of money. Never in all my almost 67 years have I seen a bigger waste of money. It's incredible. Because it's not a Sir? It's not a No, I just threw a, a round figure. I just don't want people thinking. There's a whole lot of real estate and a whole lot of bricks and mortar out there in me. But it, no, it's, it's not. I, mean, I don't care if it was 10 cents. <laughs> that to me is not something that should have been approved as discretionary spending when we're in the situation we're in as we are today. That's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. Bob, before you say anything, thank you very much for providing water. And no, no, no. But I, I, before you speak, you know that that's part of being a, a community. And despite the different opinions that we have here, and, and we spent the last five hours together, um, I, I appreciate you now. doing that. You all are family. We're all family now. Okay. <laughs> so uh, Paul Jameson at Rusty Terry Court. Uh, a quick question. This is just a question, just. Regarding me, I'm not sure it's connected to others. Uh, the address I live in is 6 Eric Court, Sickerville, New Jersey. What I really see right now paying taxes is, is Grosso Township. The property value incredibly is decreasing because of Sickerville. Because I see what I understood, I'm not sure I'm correct on this. Um, as per my knowledge, Sickerville is into three townships. One is in Winslow, one is in Gloucester, one is in Washington Township. And despite me being from the neighbors across our street, their address ends up with... They're in Washington Township, but... The no, they're in Gloucester Township. They're across You're the and their You're off Johnson is, Road, correct? Yeah, I'm on Johnson Road across... Uh, I'm on Johnson and first... It's a new development by Ryan Holmes at Eric yes. Court. And across my street, the neighbors... Uh, 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 we are new, new development. It came in 2013. Our address didn't come on GPS, so I used to request the address of our neighbors, and their address was Gloucester Township, and it is 08054. I'm sorry if I'm incorrect. It's a different zip code, and it says Gloucester Township. So, can there be something be done that I can like? We can have Gloucester Township rather than Sickerville because it's like I don't. I'm not. It's something to change. But zero zero eight one is giving my property value. I'm paying higher taxes, and as a, as a uh, taxpayer, I'm requesting if you can at least push me to that category because as soon as I as I said in my previous conversation, as I speak with people who say South Jersey, it's Cherry Hill. Nobody knows Gloucester Township. Now, as I tell people who live in Cherry Hill and Voorhees, I live in Sickerville, oh, you live in that place? I don't know what about it, Sickerville and Winslow, I'm not, I'm not hard feelings about it, but it's increasing my property value. I, to be honest, day before yesterday, I spoke with my wife. I was thinking, let me see what my property value is. Let me send my house and move back to Cherry Hill. No hard feelings. I didn't want it to do that, but I was looking. The property value has decreased like $30,000 from my purchase price in 2013. So it's like a problem. Can you guys do something? Can you move me, give me a Gloucester Township in my red? On my driving license, it says Six Harry Court, Sickerville. And she says, where is Gloucester? Where is that? Is that there? So can you go help me out to get me like that status back on my driving license and an uh, identity? We have eight different zip codes in our township. <laughs> there are people that live in the northern part of our town. Uh, See Miss Johnson here. She lives in Catalina Hills. She has a Magnolia zip code. Um, Dan lives on. on Man, a, do you have Summerdale? Summerdale. Summerdale, which is 08083. Michael and Scott. Michael and Scott. They have 0801. She has 0801. She has. Uh, uh, Michelle has 0802. Glendora. Glendora has its own zip code and their own post office there. This is a federal thing with the United States Postal Service. And one of the things that the mayor is trying to do in his time here is to make sure that we're all one cohesive. Yes, we all have our, um, our, our different parts of our community. Mr. Pondo is very proud of where he lives in the historic village of Ariel. Okay? Uh, we all have neighborhoods. Yeah. Mr. Hague says Highland Village. You know, and for people call it Chestnut Glen. You know, those are different sections of our town. I like where I live in Blackwood, 08012. Uh, but that is a United States Postal Service issue, and they have based any time the township has approached the United States Postal Service, they said that cost will be uh, on the residents of Gloucester Township, if that's something that they wanted to do. Am I correct, Mr. Cardis? Mr. Carson's been here for close to 30 years. Many, many years ago, when we approached
push them. Uh, the time is still running. Am I okay with that? It's like 55 seconds. Yep. Yeah, you are. Yeah. <laughs> when, uh, we relaxed that a long time ago. <laughs> when Sandy Love was mayor, Sandy had a conversation with the uh, United States Postal Service. They wanted us to uh, put $5 million in the building, a new building for them, and then they would consider giving us our own zip code. Uh, needless to say, even today, $5 million is a lot of money. So. Yeah, that's true. Like, you, I, I, what I understood is no hard feelings. I see you guys are the bosses right now to handle this stuff, or you might have a bu other boss, like the mayor. Can You can request, my pass on my request to the mayor that he can do something that we all can have, like you're paying taxes for Gloucester Township, or similarly, what, this should be sorted down. It's a problem which was, mis it's a mistake which was done in the past. We should be, we are the new generation. We have to do something that the new, it doesn't catch on to the new gener next generation. Can you guys do something on it? Uh, it's like for all, all of us. It's a family problem. I'm not saying my problem. It's a family. You guys have. You guys are facing this problem. So see if you can do something. And I, my first request, you can so, go. I Paul, can give you a written request right now to. So Paul, you're okay with the township spending five million dollars? No, no, it's so not five million. million. See, to be honest, if if I go and I, I, I've been this is for 19 years. I serve, I've been serving U.S. for 19 years. This is my 19th year of my career. I've been in the U.S. as a U.S. citizen for six years now. And I say, if I'm into sales, I can go and pitch in. I'll make that five million to fifty thousand dollars and get my township what we get. But it's not. It's a request. You should. You guys can do something. Where did you find it come from? It's not a number. We've been. We've been working. Yeah, you can. I, you, let me talk to them. I'll make sure that five million goes down to fifty thousand dollars. I'll pay for that fifty thousand if my fellow citizens get the right thing they need. I, I already. I, I said earlier. I said my taxes were higher. You, you asked me twenty thousand dollars. I'll pay twenty thousand dollars. I respect the government. I respect the taxes are going the right way. I'm not asking where they're going. As a citizen, I, it's not my right. I don't. I, I trust my government. Okay. No, it is your right to yeah. ask where your taxes. As, are. As, 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 as right now, to be honest, I have too much work. I have to make sure I make my money, so I pay my taxes. The way you take my house back and I'll go to foreclosure. To be honest, okay? <laughs> no hard feelings. Okay. I drive a nice car. I, I have dreams. I want to be in the U.S. I love U.S. from the day I I got my senses. I came here and I make sure I give my best. What I'm trying to say is, it's time if you can do something. It's a humble request. All right. No hard feelings. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Miller is our last speaker. I had said that, Miss. Miss. Joanne, do you like to speak? All right, Joanne, Miss Carr is going to be our last speaker after Mr. Miller. And two questions. Yes. Uh, or statements, actually. Um, you were talking earlier about uh, old houses run down, vacant. Got yeah, one two doors down from me. The trees and shrubs were so overgrown you can't even see the house. And Township has done nothing. First of all. Anthony, you gotta tell us about it. I just did. Okay, uh, what's the address? Uh, mine's 424 Huntington. It's two doors down from me. I'm sorry. I don't know the exact address. Of the Huntington. That's what the yeah. house is there. Yeah. You, you can't miss it. It looks like woods. Um, secondly, you spoke earlier about being self-insured. Yes. Um, then why, when a Township vehicle hits my vehicle in front of my house, I have to file a claim to my insurance company. And are, they pay. Let me clarify health health. We're health for health insurance, we are self self insured. Okay. Workmen's comp, we are also self insured. Both of them we have what's called a third party administrator. And then there's excess insurance. So the third party administrator adjudicates the claims. On the general liability property and casualty, which is what you're referring to, we are fully insured. Years ago, we were self-insured, but it just was not cost-effective. So we go out, we have a, have a broker. Uh, that broker is uh, Connor Strong. They go out, they price out the market, they look at the, the Camden County GIF, they look at uh, different uh, individual insurance companies. Right now, for the last couple of years, we have been with travelers. So, so in that sense, we are not self-insured. Okay, but why do I have to file a claim to my insurance company to pay the claim? Why didn't the township insurance company pay the claim? I don't know the particulars, to be honest with you. I have to defer to Mr. Carlemer and his staff to. Once the complaint comes in, uh, we will fill out a tour of claim. We send to the insurance carrier. They make a decision under uh, their jurisdiction as to whether or not they're going to pay your claim. They look at liability. I, I, I get all that, but the point is, 
my vehicle was parked in front of my house. Nobody was in it. A township vehicle hit my vehicle. My insurance company <laughs> paid to get it fixed. Then did they Why? Seek, did they seek compensation? Yeah, I got a letter saying from them that, that the township would, would, wouldn't pay. That it was, it was closed case because you guys are self insured. Which it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense because now that goes ahead against my insurance. I don't, you know, I'm listening to it, it makes zero sense. Right. If you, if you had no fault in it, your, your insurance company fixes the vehicle, they should then pursue the township. They did. I got a letter saying that the case was closed, that the township wasn't paying. You don't handle that type of law, but it just doesn't sound right. right. Anthony, can I get your number up there? Okay.